In the Adobe forums, we got a question about automation blocks, namely Hinkelberg, I hope I pronounced the name correctly, asked, he created a custom automation which does something with the active sequence, like in his case, I think, exporting the name and some info about the used audio files of the sequence to a spreadsheet. And now he wonders, if I did something for one sequence for the active one, can I also change my tools such that it processes all sequences or all selected sequences or all sequences within a particular bin, for example. So let's see how this can be done. So here I've got a basic Premiere Pro project with two sequences and in each of them I've got uh, some footage. And now let's say we want to retrieve some info from those sequences and uh, let's say to keep it basic we just uh, print it to the console. Yeah, And what we could print to this console is, for example, from the sequence any attributes like for example its name so this will print the name of the active sequence and then let's say we also want to know what's inside the sequence so we might want to loop over the clips of the sequence and let's say we are interested only in the audio tracks of the sequence and from this clip so here it says for each clip as my clip so in the variable my clip uh, the information about the clips is put now, so to speak. And we also want to write this to the console. So if we go here to write to console and we want to, from the sequence clip, we want to again get some attribute, like again, the name of the clip. Now we need to save of which clip. So we say from my clip. What will this do? From the active sequence, it will write the name and then it will loop over all audio clips or all clips and audio tracks of this sequence and write their name too. Uh, by the way, if you do not just want to write the name but want to write something like the file pass corresponding uh, to the respective project item, then you don't need the get attribute of sequence clips but of the project items because the file pass actually belongs to the project item. So you can go to PR project item and take here the get attribute and this will give you a lot of extra attributes everything that these items here in the project panel might have one of them is for example the media pass it's a full file pass yeah? and you can also take here just my clip and also um, write it to the console for example so let's check this this should write the name of the active sequence then write the name of each clip and their corresponding media pass. If we run this tool right now, it says execute script sequence two. This is the name yeah, of the active sequence. And then currently inside of here, we've got two clips. And here you can see the name of the first clip. Now that's jazz. And then here you can see the full file pass that's also printed. And here the name of the second one, and here the full file pass of the second one. And now it says execution finished. And now the question actually starts, namely, how do I modify this to do not use the active sequence, but to loop over many sequences and do this? Yeah. The key point here is to understand that sequences are project items. So you want to loop over project items. So we go in the project items section, go here to this loop for each item like this, and plug this entire thing inside of here. Now all of this will be executed for all items that we specify here. We only want to execute this for sequences, so therefore we uncheck all other options. Otherwise we will get nonsense, because for other items, uh, something like the name of the sequence name of the items cannot be retrieved, or you cannot loop over all clips of a bin or of uh, of other type of footage yeah you can only do this for sequences so we only want to do this for sequences now you can choose do you want to process all or only the selected sequences now we process all now we only process the selected ones and if you only want to have sequences in a particular bin like let's say we have here a bin uh, edits and you only want to process the sequences in this bin then you can just select this and click here refresh and now it says I loop only over items in the bin and sub bins of this bin edits. Now yeah, you can also say 
just in the bin and not in subbins, whatever you want. If you keep this here empty, what it is by default, it means all in the bin and subbins of, of the root folder, yeah? So, so in the root bin, it means all sequences essentially. Okay, but now we want to only process in the edits folder and only selected ones currently. So this means at the moment it would be none and now it would be these two sequences. Now we need to change one more important detail in the code and this is here, it's still hard coded to use the active sequence. Yeah, this means for each selected sequence in this bin, it would do the following and the following just says do something with the active sequence. So this means it would execute this code here twice for this one and for this one and in each iteration it would use here and here the active sequence and not the sequence we are currently using yeah so for which we are processing this loop namely the sequence for which we are currently processing this loop is stored in the variable my item yeah it says for each item as my item this means when this code is executed the first time my item will be pointed will point to the first sequence when the loop is executed the second time, namely for this sequence, then my item will point to this sequence. Okay, so this means wherever we have here active sequence, we need to instead put the variable my item. This makes sure that instead of the active sequence, it takes here the name of the item, so over the sequence that we currently loop over, and here it loops also over the clips of this particular sequence. Yeah? Um, so in a nutshell, wrap your code into this for each item loop and make sure wherever it says active sequence, replace it by the variable my item from here. If you want to make your code more readable, we can also rename this and say my item should actually be uh, renamed by let's say my sequence. Yeah. Now it says for each item as my sequence, in these bins, we only want to process sequences. Um, and now we write to the console the name of this particular sequence that we're currently looping over and then we loop over the clips of this particular sequence and write their details to the console too. Okay. So let's do a quick check here and with the two sequences selected because we are only processing selected items, we run this code and now we check our console. Here's our second execution and it's, you can see it first prints sequence one. So the name of the first sequence that we process and then the names and the file passes of the clips that are contained in this sequence. And then it processes the second sequence, sequence two, and again prints the name and the file pass of all the items, of all the audio clips that are placed in that sequence. Okay, so you can see it processes both of them. And then again, uh, if you don't want to just put these information in the console, but write them into a spreadsheet, then instead of the write to console block, you can simply go here to file spreadsheet and say add row to spreadsheet. Yeah, so here you could, for example, say to this spreadsheet file, you could put uh, the name of the sequence in cell A and maybe we don't want a cell B, so we eliminate that. So now it would just add a row to, to this spreadsheet file that you have here. But this is another topic. So this is how you batch process many sequences in automation blocks. If you like automation blocks and if you like these tutorials and if you want to say thank you or support me, you can share the tools that you developed with automation blocks such that others can also benefit from them. I would love to see your tools in our community library. If you want this to happen, just send them to me. That's it for this tutorial. My name is Matthias and I'm looking forward to see you in the next tutorial.